Are you trying to paint your baseboards and you have carpet in the way? There are a lot of methods out there for how to paint baseboards with carpet, but they don't all work in all situations. I figured out a method that works even in the trickiest of carpet situations. Before we go further talking about painting baseboards, I wanted to put in a little disclaimer that I am certainly not a professional painter. I am definitely a DIYer, although I have painted a lot in my day and I'm a pretty good painter. But if you have any suggestions for how I could do this project better, I am totally all ears because I have a lot of baseboards to paint and I would love more suggestions. So I've watched pretty much every YouTube video out there about how to paint baseboards, looking for advice on my situation, and I haven't been able to find any. Basically, there's four different methods for painting baseboards, and I felt like none of them were really gonna work in my situation. In this current house, I have baseboards that go all the way down to the subfloor. And then in the areas with carpet, there's the carpet tack strip in front of the baseboard and then the carpet on top of it. The carpet is brand new. We just installed it two years ago when we moved in this house. So I really want to protect my carpet and not make a mess of it during this project. The first method you'll see on how to paint baseboards with carpet is removing the baseboards. Well, that wouldn't really work in my situation because I have the carpet and the tack strips in the way. The next method you might see is pulling up the carpet. I am not doing that with my brand new carpet. And then you might hear about freehand painting the baseboards around the carpet. I know that's the way some professional painters do it, but I don't know how that would be humanly possible with thick, fluffy carpet like I have. And then the last method that's most common is laying down thick painter's tape and tucking it underneath the baseboard. That worked fine in my last house, but there's no way I can do that here with the baseboards all the way down to the subfloor. Now, I will say when I did use the painter's tape method in my other house, there are definitely flaws to that method. The painter's tape is not very strong. So when you're trying to push it underneath the baseboards, it will rip. Sometimes it doesn't hold the carpet down very well. And it also doesn't really form a perfect seal there. So sometimes the paint can still leak down and get on the carpet. So it's certainly not a perfect method, even when you do have carpet that it will work with. But after two years of working on this house, I've decided it's finally time for me to start tackling painting these baseboards, even in the tricky carpeted areas of my house. And I wanted to figure out some way I could do it. Well, I think I found a solution. Here's what I did. The first step was to get those baseboards as clean as possible. I wiped them down with a microfiber cloth to get most of the dirt and grime off of them. And then next up, I followed with a magic eraser on any really tough stains that were on there. For example, there was a blood stain on one of my baseboards. It's not from me, not sure where it came from. We're not gonna ask any questions. After I got the baseboards clean, the next step was to caulk them with molding caulk. Now I haven't always done this step, but I really do think that caulking with molding caulk on your baseboards can really help just make it really nice and finished at the end. You just use it to fill in those little gaps between the baseboards on the wall or any gaps you might have in the corners. If you are gonna caulk the baseboards, it's very important to use the right type of caulk. You need something that is paintable and flexible. I really like this DAP Alex Flex molding caulk. I find that it's really easy to work with. To put the caulk on, I just use the caulking gun with a really tiny bead, lay it along those edges, and then smooth it with my finger. It's gonna feel like you're wiping most of it off, but you're really just trying to get a tiny bit of it down in those cracks. The next step is to tape off the carpets. And as I said, I really didn't feel like painter's tape would work here, so I went looking for a good solution. My husband had suggested checking out gaffer's tape, and that's the sort of tape they use in theater productions or audiovisual productions, where they'll use it to tape down the cords on carpet. And gaffer's tape is special in that it doesn't stick long-term. It's very sturdy, but it won't leave any kind of residue behind, and that's why it's used on floors. Well, gaffer's tape is very expensive, but I found a really good solution that is very similar to gaffer's tape for quite a bit less. It's called 3M No Residue Duct Tape. It's very strong, just like duct tape, but it does not leave any residue behind. They also call it painter's duct, duct tape. So it's definitely useful in situations like this. It's still pretty pricey at about $9 for not a very big roll, but it's a whole lot cheaper than gaffer's tape, which is around $30 a roll. To tape down the carpets, I laid down the duct tape flat on the carpet, 
making sure to leave a little extra tape towards the baseboards. So then I could push that tape down with a large putty knife and push it against the baseboards to form a seal down below. After you get everything taped, the next step is going to be to prime your baseboards. Because oil-based paint was usually used on trim in the past, you probably want to just assume that the paint on there is oil-based. So pick a primer that will stick to oil-based paint. I really like this Zinzer 123 primer. It is a water-based primer, so it's easy to clean up, but it will stick to oil-based paint. Next step is to paint the trim. Now, the choice of paint that you use on your trim is critical. Believe me, I've used a lot of different paints on trim and I know what works. Thankfully, these days, oil-based paint is not necessary because there are a lot of really high-quality water-based paints out there. And oil-based paint is just so much harder to clean up and it is worse for the environment. When you're choosing a paint for your trim, I would highly suggest you do not use a typical latex wall paint. Even though some people at the paint store might say it's fine to use the wall paint for your trim, I've tried it and it really does not stand up the same way that paint specifically made for trim will. After trying out a variety of paints, my favorite is the Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel. When it dries, it just dries to this really nice, hard, durable finish. I will not lie, it is not a cheap paint, but if you strategically use their sales and coupons, you can get it for a pretty decent price. And I have a tip for you on that. If you go to the Sherwin-Williams website and you go to their store locator, you'll find that there's a link there to get a coupon for your next visit. It's usually $10 off $50, and at the store, they will let you combine that with the percent off sales they have going on. So you can, if you can get it for 40% off with the $10 coupon, you can get it for a really good price. The trim paint will require several coats. I usually do two to three, depending on how things are looking with it. After you're done painting the trim, it's time to paint your walls, if that's part of your project. I decided to leave the tape below the trim while I was painting my walls because I figured it was a little extra protection for the carpet in case I dripped that wall paint on the floor. When you're done with your painting, it's time to take that tape off. When you first start pulling the tape off, you need to check very carefully that the paint is not peeling off the baseboards when you pull the tape. I left my tape on there for six days, so by the time I was pulling it off, it was very dry and it did not peel away. But depending on the type of paint you used, that might be a problem. If you do notice it is peeling away a little bit, you might want to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to slice that seam between the tape and the paint before you pull it off. I did find when I pulled this tape off, I did have a bit of a ridge on the baseboards from where the tape was. So I used a small putty knife to scrape that ridge off. Then unfortunately, I did end up with a few scuffs on there from the scraper, but those came off pretty quickly with a magic eraser. I'm really happy with how my baseboards came out, especially considering this was a nearly impossible situation to paint these baseboards, but I think they look really nice and I'm really happy with how my bedroom looks. I have a lot more trim to tackle around this house. If anybody has any tips for me, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be very open to tips on how to make painting these baseboards easier around my house. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.